from New York City, it's Wendy Williams. Today, Siggy Flicker, Don Lemon, and Jane Blaise Mitchell join Wendy to tackle today's hottest stories on our Hot Talk panel. Plus, it's Flashback Friday. We're looking back at our favorite moments from the show. And all the latest juicy hot topics. ex-wife Tamika is sending shocking tweets, we'll talk. And Jennifer Lopez is dishing about being a single mom. It's real and very honest. And also tonight, I'm guest starring on one of my favorite shows, and uh, I'll give you a sneak peek. <laughs> excited this weekend because the girls with the fake hair know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm feeling the dads down here like spider and then you patch your wee baby. As a mother, I'm, I couldn't be more happy that this weekend is finally here. It's the boys 13th birthday party coming up this weekend. I, just, I mean, my husband and I have been planning this for a couple of months. He's been driving us crazy and so it's here. I'm excited for him. We'll be at the party. My parents fly into town today. The parents of a lot of the kids coming to the party are invited. There's hundreds of kids invited and we got all kinds of tricks going on at this party but I don't want to talk now because on account of he might be watching. <laughs> no, he better be at school. But I still can't talk because all he knows is that there's a party and he knows what he wants to wear, but he doesn't know any of the surprises inside. But I'll fill you in on Monday. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I know Monday is Columbus Day. I'm working. So hope hopefully you'll be watching. <laughs> anyway, uh, everybody, I'm really excited tonight. I'm guest starring on one of my favorite uh, sitcoms. It's on ABC. It's called The Neighbors. Do you ever watch that? Here's how I got the part. The other day, uh, the other day when um, Blair Underwood was here, remember he was promoting his show Ironside, and, and Blair said when he was on Broadway in Streetcar Named Desire that, uh, you know, a big honcho at uh, NBC was in the audience watching the play and squinted and said, to, uh, you know, about Blair, oh my gosh, he would be perfect for something. And that's how his Ironside show came about. He was being watched while he was on Broadway. And Blair had no idea the guy was there. When I was on Broadway playing Matron Mama Morton in Chicago, <laughs> I have no idea who's in the audience. Well, it turns out one of the big writers at The Neighbors, you know, the sitcom, was in the audience and saw how well I played, you know, big mouth black woman. <laughs> <laughs> and decided to call my people to ask, do I want to play a big mouth black woman? <laughs> but a job is a job. Yeah. And a sitcom is a sitcom. <laughs> and I, this, this happens to be a show that I really do love. Um, so I play, um, a woman who owns a hair salon and her name is Shirley. <laughs> As in Big Shirley. <laughs> Take a look, I got a sneak for you. Shirley, I want to introduce you to somebody. You brought your accountant? Okay. No, no. Sorry, I'm Debbie Weaver. Hello, Debbie. So you came to hold Jackie's hand on her big day? Well, Shirley talked me into trying a new hairstyle, getting my hair braided. Oh! Oh, braids, those are fun. 
Hey, as long as we're doing things your way, maybe I should get some. <gasps> Fun! We could be twins. Oh, Shirley. Tanya, get the white girl a smock. <laughs> <laughs> It doubles back and becomes a hairdo. <laughs> Almost. It's so tight I can't stop smiling. Is that normal? Girl, nothing about you was normal. Okay. <laughs> so that was a sneak peek, and I was really excited to be there. Jamie Gertz starred in one of my favorite movies of all times, Less Than Zero. Remember that with Robert Downey Jr.? <laughs> anyway. So The Neighbors airs tonight at 8.30 on ABC. So, now. So, the last we heard, Usher and his ex-wife, Tamika, were battling it out in court. Usher has full custody of their two sons, and Tamika has no custody. My mouth is watering, sorry. No custody. Um, and she was given a psychological evaluation. We talked about this earlier in the week, and um, the alleged... Uh, ruling from the psychological evaluation is that she has narcissistic tendencies. <gasps> Whatever that is, just the idea that you have to have a psychological evaluation, and as a woman, you know, the main parent, you have both of your kids snatched from you, makes me look at her with a side eye, like, what is going on? But now it seems that Tamika apparently is over fighting for her kids and lusting over her ex-husband. <gasps> well, take a look at the picture that she recently posted. <laughs> nice. The caption that she put under the picture uh, read, well, sheesh, my favor, uh, uh, my baby favor, father, sorry, I don't, I don't talk like that. My baby father looking scrump. Well, here's the thing, Tamika, which way is it going to be? Are we hiring lawyer and going after him to fight for our kids, or do we want to jump back in bed with him? See, that's why they said you need an evaluation. You, no, I'm just saying, you, uh, like, you don't play. You know, mothers know, heck, women know. You know, you don't play when it comes to your kids. You're not going to talk about him looking scrump. What you need to be doing is you need to be hunting down a team of a team of lawyers, at least two, and a private eye. Because if you put a good private eye on any one of us for any number of days or weeks, <laughs> you're gonna find something. <laughs> you're gonna find something. And so, um, Tamika, just focus on what's important. Uh, and I, I, you know, Tamika isn't the only one showing love to her ex. Chad Ochocinco tweeted this picture. There were some girls over here who I heard say, yes, yes. <laughs> you all are still feeling him like that? No. Thank you. I mean, don't, you don't have to agree with me, but I'm not feeling him like that. Like, he's hot, and hot is hot all day long. But the, his behavior makes him a big knot. Now, he's on the TV being weird kissing Evelyn. I, I still like Evelyn, because I think that a woman, sometimes, you know, you make a mistake, and then you redeem yourself. And she's made it perfectly clear over social media, for which neither one of them can stay off of it, so we know all the business. <laughs> she's made it perfectly clear. She doesn't want to stay with him. Um, basketball wives, this... I haven't seen one episode. I'll be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> Basketball wise, this season, I have not seen. And it, that used to be my thing. Remember when Evelyn ran across the conference room table yeah. with her shoes off? <laughs> to me, that's, that's kind of, you know, where things went to the left, because I don't like to see fighting and, and like that, you know, with women. But now I think this season, it's so quiet. Are you watching? Yes. Have you been wondering why I don't talk about it? No, as much as we've been talking about basketball wives all these seasons. Okay, well, they didn't miss it either. Well, look, the, the ratings aren't doing uh, so well for the show this season. Um, and Evelyn, allegedly, the only spinoff, allegedly, that she wants is a spinoff by herself. Well, I don't know what that spinoff would be on account of I don't know what Ev's been up to recently. But I do know one thing, Chad, you need to, um, you need to, no, you need to get rid of that. Ferrari, if you still have it, that you allegedly paid $300,000 for, what was that, last year? And that flat screen TV. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, well, they're, exp they're still expensive. 
This man has four kids and allegedly he's still behind big time in his child support. Oh. Up there, oiled down, kissing a flat screen TV. Get your priorities straight, man. And Evelyn, please don't go back to him. By the way, look at these glasses that I have. Well, look at, look at these. Can you pull up on these? Aren't these cute? I haven't showed these to you all month long. Look! Right! Aren't these good? I found these in a hiding place the other night in wardrobe, and I was like, why are you hiding these from me? He said, uh, you know, that he was going to uh, put them out here at a particular time. I said, no, today. These are gorgeous. <laughs> anyway, focus. Okay. Do you know the comedian Craig Robinson? Yeah. Oh, no. You know? Big black guy from The Office? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> you know Craig. He was also in the Tyler Perry movie where he played the love interest to Kerry Washington. Yeah. Um, who, by the way, Kerry, congratulations on the premiere of Scandal. Yeah. Because the, ratings, the ratings were crazy, and that girl is on fire. In the meantime, Craig now, not so much. Craig was arrested for drug possession. Oh. And not just any drugs. Oh. Drugs that the kids do. Oh. He was arrested in the Bahamas for trying to board an airplane to the U.S. with marijuana. Oh. Eh, okay, you know, <laughs> fine. Everybody's smoking. Uh, <laughs> and 18 ecstasy pills. Oh. Now see, I'm thinking ecstasy is one of those drugs. First of all, don't they make it in trailers? <laughs> Isn't that some, some people make them in trailers? And that's what kids take when they go to raves with those liquid glow sticks and stuff. <laughs> and I'm not a cornball. I mean, I know pills are getting people high, but there's categories of pills. Like, I'm thinking ecstasy is for the 25 and under, and that Xanax and, um, and <laughs> you know that stuff that Rush Limbaugh was taking back in the day? Oxycontin. That, that's, what, that's what grown people take when they want to feel nice. I, get, I don't know what you all do. I don't take any of it. All I'm saying is he's 41 years old. Too old to be carrying around and taking ecstasy. Craig, really? <laughs> Craig told the court that he bought the drugs from the U.S. and didn't know that they were illegal in the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and I don't even know how they found the pills, because first of all, you're not supposed to stash all your drugs together. <laughs> Just so that if you get caught, then they only take the weed, but you still got your pills for later on, because they were over here. Number one. Number two, you know, I have thyroid disease. My doctor has me on a pill a day. Every time I travel, I always look at my pills and I say, you know what? I'm gonna bring the, the vial with my address and the prescription thing on the front and there's only thyroid pills in there because I'm not taking drugs. So I'm innocent, but I think like a guilty person. <laughs> Never once in my life, and I've been taking a pill a day for like 10 years now, never once in my life has anybody ever at TSA taken the pills out and taken them in the back and given them a litmus test. So why wouldn't he put his pills in a thyroid container or something like why, Like, like you all who travel with your pills, I don't understand how it is that you get caught with pills unless you have them in a baggie next to the weed looking crazy. Anyway, about uh, the fine. Okay, so he was fined $1,000, and he was let off. But, and the money is fine, but it's just like the court of public opinion. Like, I think that Craig is a great actor, and he's an actor on the come up, not on the go down. So he still will be able to get jobs out of this. But my point is just more like, really? We take ecstasy at, in our 40s? <laughs> and also, this wasn't his first time being involved with um, the drugs and the law. I know, I didn't know this either. <laughs> in 2008, he was arrested for suspicion of possessing ecstasy and meth. Oh. That's what they make in the trailers, oh. meth. <laughs> ecstasy and meth, not good. Anyway, um, you take care of yourself, um, um, Craig Robinson. Jennifer Lopez um, knows that um, when it comes to being a mom, that she's got it good. 
You know, she's a single mom to her five-year-old twins with her ex, uh, Mark Anthony. And she admitted a little something to Cosmopolitan magazine. She says that, uh, you know, she has it much easier being a single mom than her younger sister, Linda, who's also a single mom to a five-year-old girl. So both girls were pregnant at the same time. Aww. That would probably be the best, to be pregnant at the same time as your sister, and then all the kids are the same age. Wow. <laughs> anyway, this is what Jen says. Jen says about Linda, she's a single mom, but not like I'm a single mom. I have a lot of help. She doesn't. I always ask, do you need anything? And she's like, I'm good, but I know she's exhausted. I love this. I'll tell you why I love this. Because, you know, there's a lot of uh, the, the rich and the famous who want us to believe that they do it all themselves. Jennifer just laid it right out. She says, she says, so, she says not just help, a lot of help that she has. So I appreciate her for being honest. Second of all, I love the sisterhood because there are a lot of family and friends that would drain on you when you become rich and famous. And she asks her sister Linda, does she need anything? And si Linda says no. I think that is so sweet. That would make me want to send over a bunch of nannies. And that would make me want to help her. So I, I love them as sisters. And I don't know um, if Linda is still working. You know, at one point in New York, she was a little news anchor. Not that good at it, though. But she was, I mean, you weren't that good. Linda, you weren't that good at it. She, you, she was... Uh, just calling it the way I saw it. Look, look, she was a little news anchor, and then she did some radio news, you know, the top of the hour. This is Linda Lopez with the 12 o'clock news. Um, but I don't know what she's doing now, but I love their sisterly bond. And I appreciate Jennifer for being honest in Cosmo magazine. And the funny thing about Cosmo is, is that, you know, Jennifer is probably the only 43-year-old woman that I've seen in a long time on the cover of Cosmo, or even reading Cosmo. I remember thinking, uh-oh, I've hit a certain spike in age. Because I used to read Cosmo all the time. Are you kidding me? Take the sex quizzes, the bedside astrologer. You know, in January, you wait for that bedside astrologer to find out how your year is gonna turn out. I mean, I still, I still secretly get Cosmo, but I have it delivered here at the office. And whenever I read it, I always put a newspaper in front of it because I always feel like, oh my God, I think I'm too old for this. But uh, good for you, Jen, because you look like any 22 year old and Cosmo, you keep the sex quizzes coming. And secretly, my old behind will keep reading. <laughs> it's such a sad day in my head. Pridezilla is coming to an end tonight. Am I the only one who dies for Bridezilla? You don't have to agree with me. It is one of my guilty pleasures on the weekends. I, when that Sex in the City marathon is on and Bridezilla is on, I am back and forth crazy. <laughs> and you know I don't like a big wedding and I hate those stupid cakes and I hate those stupid dresses and those stupid girls you call bridesmaids. I hate the money that you pay for them. I can't stand a, a wedding, like go to the justice of the peace. But there's something that I obsess about with Bridezilla and the something is the way the show is put together and all the crazy stuff. So tonight, Bridezilla's last episode airs, and they've saved the worst Bridezilla for last. Yeah! But when I say worst, that's good. The bride's name is Walora. <laughs> you know, that's one of my people. I bet your daddy's name is Willie, and mommy's name is Laura. Anyway, let's take a look at Walora in action. I'm a maid of honor, my sister. I just want y'all to know that this girl cannot be there for me. She don't pick up the phone. Are you serious right now? She don't call me back. She must have lost her mind. That's what the she did. She is set up because the season finale of Br uh, Bridezilla airs tonight at 9 on We right after the neighbors over on ABC. So I'm good with a snack. 
Keep it clapping, everybody. We've got a terrific show for you on today's Hot Talk panel. We've got my friend, CNN anchor Don Lemon. We've got a woman that I love from HLN, host Jane Velez Mitchell, and the fabulous relationship expert, friend of the show, Siggy Flicker is here. They're gonna join me to break down the week's hottest stories. But up next, it's time for Celebrity Fan Out. Don't miss it. He's just out of prison, and now he's starring in a new movie called I'm in Love with a Church Girl. God don't want somebody like me in this church, okay? Oh, I'm asking the questions, and he's gonna spill it. It's an all-new Wendy, Monday. Wendy Williams is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. fan out let's get started our first celebrity fan out comes from maria c who watches the wendy show on kdfw in fort worth texas maria writes how you doing wendy i took a walk through central park during a recent trip to new york and you won't believe who i ran into my favorite actress jennifer garner <laughs> i felt awkward asking for a photo but she was so friendly and even took the picture herself wow you guys look cute Thank you, Maria. Okay. Our next celebrity fan out comes from Teresa G, who watches the Wendy show on WAGA in Atlanta, Georgia. Teresa says, hi, Wendy. My family and I recently went on a road trip, and you'll never believe who we ran into at a restaurant along the way. Honey Boo Boo's mom, Mama June. <laughs> She was celebrating Honey Boo Boo's birthday, and she brought me over to meet the whole Boo Boo family. They were all on their best behavior, and I didn't hear a single burp the whole night. <laughs> it's good. Thanks, Teresa. All right, um, our next um, fan out is from Cola. Cola watches a show here in New York on WNYW in Brooklyn, and she says, hi, Wendy. I was at work talking to one of my coworkers when I heard a customer walk up behind me and ask for help. When I turned around, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Paris Hilton. <laughs> in, so Cola's working in a beauty supply store. Cola, you look like a celebrity yourself. <laughs> Um, she was happy to strike a pose with me and even said I was pretty and that my ombre hair was hot. <laughs> it made my day. <laughs> Our next celebrity fan out comes from Mike D, who watches The Wendy Show on WSVN in Miami, Florida. And Mike says, um, hi, Wendy, I'm a doctor and I recently went to work at a hospital in Central Africa. I was at work one day and you'll never believe who I saw. It was South African beauty Charlize Theron. Wow. Oh. She was so sweet and thanked me for all my hard work. It was an amazing moment and it really brightened up my day. Wow, thanks, Mike. And our final celebrity fan out comes from um, Lucy W. I love that name, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy W., who watches The Wendy Show on WNOL in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Um, Lucy writes, hey, Wendy, my boyfriend manages a local restaurant, and I stopped by one night to visit him at work. Um, it just so happens a huge celebrity also stopped by that night, and we posed for a picture, and he, uh, and posed for a picture with my boyfriend. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> He loved the restaurant and said in his Terminator voice, I'll be back. <laughs> Look, and sure enough, Arnold returned for, returned for dinner the very next night. <laughs> Lucy, that's so cute. Thank you all for your celebrity fan -off. If you have ever had a celebrity encounter or you know somebody who has and you have the photo to share, go to wendyshow.com and send it to us, okay? Up next, everybody, hang on tight. It's going to be a bumpy ride with our hot talk panel, breaking down the hottest, hottest stories of the week. Turn up the 
Repeat, everybody, we're going to be discussing the hottest topics of the week in the latest edition of Hot Talk. Joining me are people who've been here before, HLN host and author of the best-selling book, Exposed, The Secret Life of Jody Arias. Welcome our friend, Jane Velez Mitchell. Thank you. Relationship expert, friend, and contributing editor at Marie Claire Magazine. Say hello to Ziggy Flicker. Yeah. 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 And, of course, the anchor of CNN Newsroom. Give it up for our friend Don Lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, gang, here we go. Um, this divorce rumor with Chloe and Lamar, mm -hmm. swirling, swirling, swirling. Mm -hmm. I've encouraged through the TV that she get the divorce. He's battling addiction. It's alleged crack. Um, and goodness only knows what else is going on. Earlier this week in Hot Topics, I said that if I was Chloe, you know, uh, because I've been through a place of addiction, 10 years mm -hmm. and a little change, um, <laughs> uh, you know, with crack and coke and all kinds of stuff, uh, I could not, uh, addiction is a deal breaker in my marriage. It, it is a deal breaker. I'm not putting up with that, particularly if I was 29 with no kids and the one doing the drugs is a multimillionaire because the more money you have, mm, the easier it is to addiction. run and yeah. sneak and hide. Right. Chloe doesn't need this in her life. No. Go, Don. Are, are you starting with me? <laughs> yes. Wendy, I love you, but I have to disagree. Oh. Because okay. I think... Nobody disagrees it's with for Wendy. Better of, I, it, marriage is for better or for worse. And especially young people think you can get into a relationship and then all of a sudden get out. You married that person for better or for worse. I understand. You if, are, if it was two I, people in the relationship who were, I, in, who, who were addicted, I would say I, yes. Uh, but she should cling to him right now. You want the person who loves you the most to be with you and support you. I, and I, then I, I reach can. a point Wait a second, but I agree you with you with all due respect. You are 100% wrong. In a relationship... <laughs> No, no, no. In a relationship, when you have an addiction, you should stick with that person. Right. But it takes two to tango. Absolutely. Chloe can't be doing all the work while Lamar hangs out with his alleged addiction <laughs> with his Brillo pad. Yeah, it ain't but, happening. But, it's easy it's not for happening. anybody, hypothetically, to say, dump him. But when you're in love Thank you. and she says Thank she you. is in love, right. love means you are going to try to make it work. Right. And the thing is, then you become an enabler. You start rationalizing, minimizing, justifying making excuses for this mm -hmm. person and you know what you do you accelerate the addiction and make she it worse make excuses a man needs for him. to love she has a to woman a little bit down. more Chloe cannot be cooking and cleaning and doing all the work here's the thing Chloe is not cooking and cleaning what I'm trying to say is here's the thing I'm using really? young here, here's the thing. Uh, love with a spouse is not unconditional. Love with your children is. There are conditions to my love for my spouse. You will not be getting high on my watch. I don't have time for that. She'll reach a point where she can get to that. But initially, I'm not waiting she needs for you to, to reach the point. And furthermore, she was less than smart for marrying him after only knowing no, him for a month. Well, because if you knew your man better, you would know he was getting high. Allegedly. This could be a big publicity stunt. In fact, I've heard that there are new oh, wedding no. vows in Hollywood, in rehab or in health, for richer or for prenup, Stop till cancellation do us part. No. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on. Now, according to a new poll um, on tiethenot.com, a lot of modern couples are splitting the cost of the engagement ring. Some say going Dutch makes financial sense, mm -hmm. while others say it's chivalry uh -oh. at the end and the man should buy the ring. Mm -hmm. Remember, a wedding ring was given back when women weren't allowed to vote, have jobs, or leave the house. Right. But, but now we got money. So d uh, we'll, start j we'll start with you again. Again. Do you think <laughs> that splitting the cost for an engagement ring is the right thing to do. Absolutely. I would not want to pay. <laughs> yes! Oh, yes! Yes! I would, a room full of ladies, yes. Welcome to equal rights. Welcome to equality. Absolutely. And then when you get married, are you going to want half? I mean, when you get divorced, are you going to want half? Of course! Oh, well, how can you say that, then? You Jane, don't want to pay for half the ring, respect. but you want half from the you divorce? You shouldn't be walking around with 30 grand on your finger. Somebody's going to cut wait, it off. Wait, <laughs> or your <laughs> dog's going to eat it, and then you have to wait for the dog to poop <laughs> to get who's your ring back. Wendy, I 30? would not want to pay for that on your finger. But not everybody has Wendy Williams' ring. It's, we're not talking about $30,000. We're talking about chivalry is not dead. If a man wants to... Yeah, chivalry isn't dead. Just because you, you pay for half the ring doesn't mean that you're not... It's not that. You're, well, look, you're not chivalrous? Look, look, Come on. Look, look what smart. I have. I'm not, I'm not engaged, but look, a hemp. 
This a is bracelet. a hemp bracelet it's, that I got. But it doesn't matter whether it's a hemp or a little tiny bracelet that you get out of a bubblegum machine. Should pay, the man, the should, man pay should pay. And Why should the man pay for it? Yes. Because Why? He, he's the man. Because he's the man. And, and so when he says, you get in there and you clean up because I'm the man, you cook my meal, I'm the man, is that the same thing? No, we have to agree on certain other things, right, but we, something as oh. traditional as the ring. Here's my opinion on this. My opinion on this is that there will be no splitting the cost of a ring. You get me what you can afford, and I swear to you, I will not complain. Also, I'll go one further. I don't believe in ring shopping. I believe that you need to, as soon as you and your man even mention, or woman, you all, or man and man and woman, how y'all doing? <laughs> One of these, she's look, walking around. Let me just say this though. As soon as the word we might, you know, I, I could see myself marrying you. Yeah. That's your line, girls, where you slip in and you say, I like white gold and I wear a size seven. <laughs> Men are not stupid, and then let him go out and get the ring. I just think I, I hate the idea of a girl going ring shopping with a man. This right. is not my first ring. This what is my second ring. What if you ask him? I, what I'm if you not, ask him? I don't girls don't this one does not ask anybody to marry them. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I, I mean, this is a problem. Men want a little bit of a challenge. A man's got to love you a little oh, bit more. Oh, gosh, you guys are stereotyping me. A man wants to feel like a man. Wait, you want to be like I wanna a feel like a man. I want to feel like a man with my money in my pocket. in divorce. Maybe you should just rent a <laughs> ring. Then you can give it back I, when it's over. He's been, I think he's been dating gold diggers. Wanna, there are great women out there. We're not all about. You're disgusting, Don. <laughs> no, come on, you guys. Let's move on. Because here's another one, okay? 19 states have started the body mass index screening in schools to combat childhood obesity. Oh. Kids who show signs of being obese, according to the school, were sent home with these vile letters, basically calling them fatsos. They were fat letters informing the parents that you need to do something about your kid's weight. Now, Jane, I'm gonna go to you first. Is this right <laughs> or wrong? I fight my weight, I struggle with my weight, and I wanna say thank you, Mom, when she said, darling, you're getting fat, because I needed to hear it. Right. And yes. Americans need to hear that they're yes. fat. Two-thirds of Americans are overweight or obese. It's not a lifestyle, it's a disease, it's food addiction, and we need help. If somebody gets on a plane and they're drunk or they're smoking a cigarette, you say something. But if somebody gets on and they're morbidly obese, that's a lifestyle. Good for you, I'm Jane. sorry, no. Good for you. And I'm, I'm gonna go one further than Jane, I yes. agree with you. When these parents are receiving their letters about their children, they should buy a dozen roses for the person who wrote the letter. Right. Obesity leads to health risks. Well, here's it's the saying, problem. Your here's, child is at risk. But here's the problem. These kids are being given these letters, and the kids know what's inside the letters. They're, giving, give, get in, they're being given these letters in front of other kids. I, like you, had parents who called me fat every chance that they got. And today, I thank them for that, because God only knows how fat, much fatter I well, could have been. Yeah. But at the school, school, you butt out of my household. You better <laughs> never send my kid home with some letter. Yeah, but okay? wait, not every now, parent is like you. Well, you want to know not something? Every we laugh like at you. Mama June and, and Honey Boo Boo, but let's no. talk real. Right. Turn off the TV for a moment, Mama June. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to talk about you and your fat family. <laughs> you, it is a crime how you continue to feed your daughter like that. There are kids in school to make fun. There's heart disease and all kinds of things. But that's Mama June's problem. Yeah, but it's how not are they just... gonna know? How's Mama June gonna know? She doesn't know. Well, she thinks it's she cool. Does she take her kids to a doctor? Well, that's the thing. Parents aren't doing that. Parents aren't being parents. So the, the well, school then, has to step maybe in and they say... Need, uh, well, you know what? Th Sorry, the school what? already has too much of a say Wendy, in people's lives. The problem is that America is a nation of food addicts. Right. No. We're being bombarded. And we want to coddle kids and pretend you they're not every fat. Single day. They you need a say... license. You need a license to drive a car. You should have a license to have a child. Amen. And let's, and let's, 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 let's tell you something. And just because you can't have a child, it doesn't mean you let's should have one. Let me tell you something about coddling kids. Whether the teachers at the school say something or not, eventually it's going to be the cruel kids on the, on the playground that exactly. call them fat so and everything. Well, Wendy, that's how we grew up. That's how we became strong. It, it's like, you better go back down oh, the street like and beat that. that kid I up. I like that, but I don't like the teachers being involved. How we grew up is that the teachers weren't involved. Our parents called us fat so, our, our doctors <laughs> put us on the scale, and kids made fun of us. But and sweet then sweet we are the only Wendy, parents, parents sometimes. Are the parents, the parents, parents are not involved right. today. Right. The kids, the kids are no right. longer raising their kids. Amen. Listen, if you want to see how a kid's gonna turn out. Look at the parents. If the parents are eating bad food, the kids gonna eat bad food. The parents parents Mama eat June your vegetables. The, kid's gonna be Mama June. <laughs> the problem? Would you tell that to Mama June to her face? Because she's been here, and I didn't say Listen, it. Listen, I love Mama June. She but made is spaghetti she... with ketchup she... and a lot of butter. And you didn't. And you didn't eat it. I know. I acted like I liked it. You didn't eat it. I saw it. Wendy. I saw it. Peeped you. You didn't eat it. You had your little thing on the side. I was like, Wendy's not gonna eat that. You were yes, in I your would napkin. tell Mama June. I would tell her in a loving way. I love her. And listen, I like my big girls. I like. I actually like being big. I do, I think. <laughs>
And I like my big boys, too. So, <laughs> but here's the thing. I actually like being bigger in person than I am, but it does not look good on television. So I'm a little bit thinner. I do what I have to, to and what have make you been it doing work. to get thin? Oh, I'm, I've been doing a detox, Wendy. <laughs> oh, yeah. On the Martha's no. Vineyard diet, the one you did. Oh, yes, I did that years ago. Yeah, it was great. I did and I'm it. starting 15 it tomorrow. Pounds. Look at me. I mean, excuse me, not look at me, but listen. We, we, <laughs> this panel is over. As you can see, uh, there's a lot to talk about. If you want to know more about my fabulous panelists, go to uh, wendyshow.com. Up next, everybody, it's time for Ask Wendy. Uh. <laughs> Fashion fabulousness is here. Fashion expert and friend to the show, Lloyd Boston, is here to show us what everyone should be wearing this season. I like your pants, Lloyd. Thank you. How you doing? I might need a bigger closet. It's an all-new Wendy Tuesday. Studio audience, it's time for Ask Wendy. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. How you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> My name is Joan. I am 66 years old. I've been married for 25 years. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> and my husband still wants me to wear very uh, sexy tight spandex things, like all the time, almost, almost all the time. And there are times when I feel it's inappropriate and it, it doesn't feel right to me, you know. And so I'd like him to back off a little bit and not always have an opinion. Do you have children in the house or grandchildren? My children are grown and no grandchildren in the house. My 92-year-old father lives with us. You're, uh, yeah. Um, well, so when do you think this is inappropriate? Um, to the grocery, to church. To... <laughs> you know, um, I think that you can have, you, you, you know your husband well enough. You've been married for over 20 years. I think mm. you can have a nice conversation. And maybe there can be a little compromise. If he wants you to wear something particular, then you go to the mall together and see what it is. There are tasteful spandexy type, only because it's my favorite material, so I know. <laughs> And I hope that my husband's still making those requests when I'm 62, yeah. because I would definitely still be doing it. But, um, you know, there are, there are spandexy things that you can wear, and then these really cute cover-ups in case you don't feel like it's you. But most importantly, have the conversation with your husband, because, you know, you're not going to feel uh, sexy for him if you're in something that's not making you comfortable. Okay? True. Good luck, Joan. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Hey, Wendy. How, How are you, you doing? doing? Good. Well, my name is Aisha. I have this uncle. He's 60 years old. Okay. Every time I bring a female friend around, he's always hitting on them. Uh-uh. I'm like, uncle. He's saying things like, do you want a sugar daddy? <laughs> my friends are like, so, like, mortified. You can tell that they're embarrassed, but they don't want to be disrespectful. What do I do? He's so embarrassing. How old are you, Aisha? I'm 34. Yeah. And your friends are all your age? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't like to disrespect elders, but I feel as though sometimes when you ask for it, old people, <laughs> you're, you're going to get it back. But you're not going to get it back from somebody who's, say, 24. There's yeah. a 34-year-old woman. You need to sit down and have a conversation with your uncle. No smiles, no playing. Not even a grin or a break of the... Not even that. <laughs> and, no, seriously, okay. ew. Yeah, ew. And, and then also, and your girlfriends, there is a respectful way that you can talk to somebody else's elder when you're a 34-year-old woman. One of the great things about getting older is that we have a better command of the, the English language. We know how to say hurtful things without, without them being like, did she just hurt my feelings? I, I'm not even sure. Yeah. I've got to stop hitting on her friends. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll do, Wendy. This is disgusting. It is. <laughs> and, and your hair is everything. Oh, thank you. Gorgeous, Aisha. Everybody, okay, um, up next, we're going to meet a woman in our audience whose boyfriend asked her to be a part of a threesome last night. <laughs> Ask Wendy continues. Keep it here. He was a singer. He was gorgeous. He was handsome. I was such a virgin. Like, it didn't... I had no... Hot topics, celebrity guests, fashion and beauty trends, plus backstage videos, and of course, my legendary after show. Catch it all on my YouTube channel. I love you for watching. We're back with Ask Wendy. Before the break, I told you that there's somebody in the audience whose boyfriend asked her to be part of a threesome last night. Hi, Wendy. My name's Joy. How you doing? All right, Joy. How joyful were you? Oh, God. <laughs> 
So last night, mm -hmm. me and my boyfriend are having sex, uh -huh. and in the middle of our encounter, he stops me okay. and asks me to get my best friend over there in the other room that was sleeping to join us. Okay. Um, I, I had no idea what to say or do, and I, this is why I'm wearing this. Trust, Trust no, no man. man chain. <laughs> I just want to know, do I address this? Do I make a conversation? Or do I just pretend that it never happened? Okay, how long have you been with your boyfriend? Very, very short period of time, about a month. Okay, ha have you and your friend ever been together? I'm not gonna judge. No, no we're okay. just best friends. Okay, no. um, a month is, just dump him. Just, just <laughs> like, like, like he, he's, he's, got, he's got this thing. She's only been with him for a month. Mm -hmm. He's got this thing where he thinks that he can bring her in. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's not respecting you for girlfriend material. Because right. this is, he thinks of you as a trick. Oh. Right? Yes. No man asks something like that in the first month. First month Maybe I... five years they right. ask, and then you say new. Right. But, okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, good loss. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Flashback Friday is next. Keep it here. And this week, we're going back to season three of The Wendy Show. My friend Brooke Shields came by, and when I asked Brooke about her relationship with a certain pop star, her answer surprised us all. Take a look. <laughs> I want to talk about you and George Michael. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's the thing. Look Did... how happy I am, and that is... Look how gay he looks! I Did know. you know he was gay? Oh, I didn't know. He was so... He was a singer. He was gorgeous. He was handsome. I was such a virgin. Like, it didn't... I had no... Yeah. And I had none of that sort of... He just was so... And he was such a gentleman. Did you guys... He didn't even kiss me. Good <laughs> I love her to this day. Thank you so much for watching uh, today. Keep those uh, coming. Uh, this flat... Well, we'll keep those coming to you, and we'll be right back. Looks like fun, doesn't it? You want to come? Because the tickets are free. Go to wendyshow.com. Right, guys? <laughs> Don't forget The Neighbors airs tonight at 8.30 on ABC. And I want to thank all my guests today, my Hot Talk panel. It was so good talking with you guys and, and arguing. <laughs> also, my co-host, my fabulous studio audience. Yeah. Thank you for being here. On Monday, everybody, Rapper Ja Rule is fresh out of prison and on our couch. And it's gonna be good. We've got another breast cancer survivor. We're gonna give her a fabulous Wendy makeover. I love you for watching today. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye.